G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, it's Friday evening here in Australia. The market has recovered 1.8%. <laughs> Look, any kind of recovery is better than no recovery. But I am worried that we're going to have another leg down this coming weekend. How low will we go? I don't know. I'm thinking we probably dip down to around the $36,000, $34,000 level. But look, hopefully I'm wrong. I really do hope that I'm wrong. But I am just concerned that this is kind of, you know, as far as we've recovered and we've still got a weekend to go. But let's have a look. $1.8 trillion. So not part, not too far off uh, $2 trillion, which isn't too bad. $200 billion there. BTC dominance. So growing now. 41% ETH dominance, uh, dropping a little bit, and gas prices is 55, which is not too bad in the grand scheme. Well, oh, no, that's not true. The grand scheme of things, it is still, it's horrible, but it's nowhere near as bad as what it's been. Now, look, it's a mixed bag here, so still, you know, we can see a fair bit of red, but the market cap was up 1.8%, so generally there were some winners. Let's have a look. What's done well in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Right, Monero, nice comeback, 23%. Telecoin, nearly 20%. Helium, Safe Moon, what is going on there? I might have to do some research. I just, I know nothing about Safe Moon other than what I've heard other people saying. And everyone, not everyone, but anyway, most of what I've heard is that it's simply a scam and it's a Ponzi scheme. So anyway, I will do some research and I'll get back to you with what my thoughts are on it. But at the moment, I'm just taking everyone else's word. All right, Stacks, nice comeback. Nano, Ontology, Sirecoin. So we got a few there. Pancake Swap, uh, BitTorrent. So not too bad. So there obviously were some gains there. But look, now we're about to get for the, to the hurtful part. What are the biggest losses over the last 24 hours? Oh, internet computer just really sort of tumbling. I think it was three hundred dollars now down to one hundred and seventy. Waves, Polygon taking a big bit of a hit there, but look, still up sixty percent. So that's not really too much. XRP gone down a little bit. Sushi, Thorchain, Yearn Finance, Litecoin. But look, now they're only getting into slight losses. Really, it's kind of here upwards. Polygon. Uh, again, they were $2 something, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them come down a little bit lower. Shiba Inu is absolutely getting wrecked. Again, who would have thought that was going to happen? But anyway, that's life. People make their own decisions. All right, so there we go. Losses, not too bad. Gains, not all that great. But again, any gain is a good gain. Now, here is what I'm looking at. So we've still got my... Little line here in the sand where I didn't think we'd sort of go below, but it did wick down below. And have a look here. It is just hanging Bitcoin onto the 200-day moving average at the moment. That is where it's just sitting. The 50 days about to cross the 100-day. Uh, and they'll call it, uh, there's some kind of name for it, some kind of cross. Some people might even call it the death cross. And it means, you know, everything's done for. But look, if Bitcoin goes uh, down for a day, below and again gets down to maybe this 36 30 sort of four thousand dollar level but then gets bought back up pretty quickly i'm still not too worried uh, look in the end could the bull run be over yep do i think it's over no that's why i'm just buying like crazy at the moment i know based on previous history when bitcoin's at the 200 day moving average that is buy city now not if it's in a bear market which it could be who knows no one truly knows but I don't think it is, and we'll get onto some stories about why I don't think it is. But unfortunately, uh, someone I really like and I think is a really smart guy, he says we are in a bit of a bubble. So that is concerning. So Vitalik Buterin, he was speaking on CNBC Business in an exclusive interview, and he said, that, well, he had his views on the market crash and the current state of cryptocurrencies. And what he said is he likened the current situation to a bubble, stating that knowing when they will pop is notoriously hard to predict. It could have ended already, he added, before continuing suggests that it could end months from now. I think it's more months from now. I don't think we're done yet. And I'm not the only one buying Bitcoin and things at the moment. I'm sure there are other people doing that as well. It's just whether there's enough of us or the sellers start to outweigh us. And I get the feeling like, you know, this was the shakeout that was needed to get rid of all these people who are just leveraging long and, you know, aren't really here because they believe in cryptocurrencies. They're just trying to, you know, f flip some coins and make a quick buck. They they get punted out with these big shakeouts. All right. Speaking of, like, you know, Ethereum, uh, Vitalik, and, and, you know, Ethereum competitors, 
another chain on Binance chain has had an exploit. You know, it's an exploit this time. They don't think it's a rug pull, but like you hear so much talk about, you know, the Binance smart chain and how good it is and all these great things that are happen happening. You know, it's cheap fees and all the rest of it and they say it's scalable and it works fast, but they have had a ton of things like this, exploits all over the place, uh, rug pulls, and again, I'm not trying to hate on Binance Smart Chain at all, but they just seem to have had a lot of issues on their chain specifically. And I don't know whether that's to do with the code uh, that it's written on or you know anything like that, or just simply it's easier for projects to get listed on Binance Smart Chain, uh, hence why they're not doing the kind of work that they have to do to get listed on Ethereum. Possibly, look, I, I don't know, but that's just kind of, I guess that I'm having at the moment, considering they really have had a lot of issues. So BSC's largest yield aggregator, Pancake Bunny, was exploited. The price of its native token crashed 99% in seconds before recovering to its current rates. I'm not sure what the current rate is right now. But Pancake Bunny, Binance Smart Chain's largest yield aggregator service, has suffered a flash loan attack with over $44 million dollars stolen by someone and then they quickly moved it onto ethereum i think the story goes on to say so yeah lots of issues still going on binance smart chain so there's upsides to it you know it's fast and it's cheap and things like that but it's got a lot of yeah, exploits and rug pulls and things like that happening on it the, happening on it at the moment and so that's why i haven't rushed out and sort of bought any but you know again each to their own if you really like it and I haven't heard of too much bad happening for Binance Smart Chain itself. It's more the the projects that have you know moved on to there or started from there. They seem to have had a lot of issues, and I think it's because they were possibly sort of rushed uh, to boost up Binance Smart Chain uh, and you know get it to take over you know some market space from Ethereum. But I think those rush jobs are probably why. Uh, a lot of these projects seem to have had the problems that they have anyway that that would be my assumption it's nothing more than that i'm not basing that on anything i'm just yeah theorizing you know stuff running through my head and i'm just letting it spit <laughs> putting it out on the mic you know you let me know what you think down below do you think that that is possibly the reasons why they've had so many issues not Binance Smart Chain itself, but a number of the projects that they've had on Binance Smart Chain again have been rug pulls and you know exploits and all sorts of things going on like that. Leave your comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. All right, Willy Woo, pretty smart guy. He's been around for a really, really long time, and this is what he says: Bitcoin is still halfway through its current bull market, and this week's price dip turned out to be a win for hodlers, according to on-chain analyst Willy Woo. Long-range macro indicators like uh, NVT ratio are very healthy and that remains unchanged. NVT or network value to transactions ratio is a popular metric which aims at identifying profitability, profit, profitability sorry, among hodlers. As Cointelegraph reported earlier this week, even before the dip, the NVT was signaling a buying opportunity at price levels around 42000 So we're currently sitting around $39,000. Oh, there we go. Back to 40,000. So again, I think we could definitely go lower, but I just, I think this is a good buy. I think the bottom was in, as I said yesterday. All right. Last but not least, optimism. So optimism grows for layer two scaling after EtherScan integration. So the Ethereum layer two scaling solution provides sorry, solutions provider Optimism has announced a collaboration with blockchain analytics platform Etherscan. In an announcement on May 21st, the technology provider declared it a major usability milestone, stating that it makes highly technical information easily searchable and human readable. So again, for anyone who's not from the crypto space, and look, even I've been here for a while and I struggle with a lot of these smart contracts. I've sent coins to place and lost them for a while and it's taken me ages to find them and get them back, particularly going from layer one to layer two on uh, Ethereum. Uh, I've you know lost some coins and now I've got to try and find it and how to get them back. So, And that's me and I've been in this space for a while. So somebody new coming to it and trying to navigate their way through this an absolute nightmare so hopefully this kind of stuff again makes it a whole lot easier 
and then leads to that you know mass worldwide adoption that we all believe is coming we're just waiting for it to get there and look it is going to be you know drip 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 and eventually then the floodgates will open but i don't think we're anywhere near there just yet you know eth 2.0 the full scaling solution and all that has to come out the full lightning network has to be adopted on bitcoin you know parachains on polka dot smart contracts on cardano we need all of that stuff basically happening at the same sort of time for crypto to really go worldwide because i don't think one network is going to be able to you know handle everything and that's just my personal thought i think it would take such a long time down the road before one network could handle it that that would just hamstring the whole industry hence why i think there's going to be multiple uh, platforms you know projects whatever you want to call them that are going to survive and do extremely well and they're going to get their own little niches out there at least in my opinion all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that gain train it was only a small gain but still we'll take it and i'll see you next time